Yes, Pallavi, you can start. Okay, let me share my Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Pallavi Bhattacharji. So, today I'm going to talk to you about debugging and root cause analysis in Java. So, the scope of this uh, presentation is understanding what is debugging of a Java application. Uh, understanding the steps of it and also understanding what is RCA and the steps involved in root cause analysis. So what is debugging? Uh, debugging is the process to find out or resolve bugs in an application or you can also use debugging to know the flow of your application. So uh, in simple words, debugging means to make your application bug free. So there are two types of uh, debugging. One is local and one is remote debugging. So local debugging means the application uh, is directly run from your IDE. That is, if you use Eclipse, you have started your application from Eclipse and we debug from there, okay? Generally, the code changes you do uh, in your IDE are constantly uh, reflected in your application. It provides a hot fix to your application. So, and it is generally used in applications who are, uh, which are lightweight and uh, small projects generally. So remote debugging is, uh, is where the application runs uh, outside your uh, IDE, uh, maybe in some Tomcat server or JBoss server. So the server could be in your local machine as well or in a remote uh, server. Uh, you can also use remote server where the application is deployed in a, an, another machine. So the IDE connects to the application through the port. Suppose uh, you have a Tomcat server in your machine and uh, the port in which your Tomcat is running is 8080 and your IDE will uh, listen to the 8080 port of your uh, uh, local machine and then you can uh, anything you do or any operation you do on your application the IDE will catch it and it will uh, you can then debug through your IDE. Generally the code changes in this process are not a uh, hot fix you once you do any code change in your IDE you have to manually go and again deploy it on your Tomcat server and uh, it is then only and restart your server and then only it is reflected okay your remote debugging is the most common type of debugging we use and if you are doing day-to-day -day java development you will use mostly remote debugging okay so the most important part of debugging is knowing the steps to debug okay so the first step is to start your server in debug mode. So if you're using a Tomcat server, you have uh, your normally just starting your server is not going to allow you to debug. You have to start your application in debug mode. Only then your breaking point will be caught in your IDE. And next is to identify which method is causing the error, okay? So suppose you are getting any uh, logical error or any runtime error or any uh, null pointer. Sorry. Okay. Any uh, null pointer exception, anything uh, that you are getting, you have to first identify which method is giving you that error. So you can do it through your console. 
and open your console in your browser and you can see which uh, for which method you are not getting the 200 response or uh, for which you are getting 404 or 500 you can check the error code and you can get the method name there so by this you have first identified the method and then you have to put some breaking points in the method it is great if you uh, know which line of code has uh, given the error then you can set the breaking point in that particular uh, line of code if not if you know only the method you can set a few breaking points in that particular method okay and next uh, is to do the flow that you have done so that the error has occurred so once you do the operation your program will catch and stop at that breaking points okay so when the id has caught those breaking points you can step in through your id and inspect different variables and watch the values of the variables and get uh, by navigating line by line and you can identify the problem uh, how uh, on which the error has occurred okay so if not if you are not you you have to repeat the process till you have identified on which line or what has caused that error okay so once you have uh, caught the error you can uh, fix your code and then again deploy the code on your server and rerun the program until it is bug free so moving on to rca so root cause analysis is a mechanism of analyzing the defect to identify its cause okay so suppose you uh, your uh, code is in production and uh, you have already delivered it to the client or you have delivered it for uat and there you get a logical error okay so you uh, you need to know the cause uh, you need to do a root cause analysis as to why this error has occurred so late stage in the project it was not caught during development or during qa why was it delivered uh, to the client in with uh, such a uh, with such defect so for that root cause analysis is done we have to find out where it was missed it was a testing miss or it was a development miss or was it a miss during the uh, requirement gathering where the use cases are prepared so in which uh, software we follow sdlc right software development life cycle so in which uh, part of the life cycle was this missed that's that, uh, that so the error has occurred so that is why root cause analysis is required so root cause analysis has three processes first you have to know what happened then you have to know why it happened and then you have to find the root cause so the steps involved in rca is uh, first you have to define the problem any bug that has occurred and then you have to identify the cause okay suppose uh, it was a qa miss suppose during the testing uh, something a test case was missing that's why a bug was not not caught earlier and it got delivered to the client okay so you have to find the cause and then you have to implement a corrective measure okay so the corrective measure is to include uh, is to first corrective measure is to rectify your program so that uh, your code is bug free okay and then you have to rerun all the tests and then deliver again okay and preventive measure is to uh, know what it has to be done to prevent this in future so that in future we can avoid uh, such uh, mishaps where we have delivered a logical error to the client so these are the steps of rca so the advantages of root cause analysis are uh, you prevent the reoccurrence of the same problems in future eventually reduces the number of defects reported over time it improves the software development process and also the project qual product quality so if you have any questions please let me know
No. All right. Okay. So you all have been assigned to projects, right? No. No, no. So okay. Um, thank you. Then, if you have uh, any questions when you start your projects and your uh, you debug, please let me know. I am. I'll help you out. Hello. Okay. Yes. Hello, Pallavi. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, when do you use this uh, means root uh, cause analysis? Okay, when we use this root cause analysis. Okay. Yes. So root cause analysis is generally used when uh, see uh, development and uh, uh, delivering and everything has a, a software development life cycle, right? So when you are developing uh, developing a software, your first step is uh, gathering requirement for the client from the client. Okay, then you break the requirement into uh, stories, and developers develop those stories. Okay, then QA tests test those stories, and they uh, raise bugs, and developers fix those bugs, and next is uh your uat that is user acceptance tests tests and then is production okay so normally root cause analysis is uh, done at the uat or production stage where you have developed a project or you have uh, delivered a code which has which is logically incorrect or which has logical errors or which does not sat, uh, meet the expectations of the client okay so uh, so that is where root cause analysis is normally done to identify what that uh, why was this missed or why is there is there is discrepancy between what is delivered and what is the expectation of the client okay so or what is uh, or the expectation of the user if it has if it is at uat so in which step was it missed? Was it during the uh, business gathering? Was it during development? Or was it during uh, QA? That where was it missed so that in future we can avoid these discrepancies and, in, and uh, increase our product quality. Oh, okay, fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, anyone, anything else? No. Okay. So, thank you. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ping me. Okay. Yes, sure. Okay. Um, thank you, Priya. That is it then. I think we can close the session. Hello, Priya. Okay, thank you. Uh, you all can drop. I'll uh, ping Priya. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you.